G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, Wingnut Wings kits, right? Fantastic kits, you know? Yeah. Best, best, you know, 130 second scale World War One kits. Well, maybe. Um, you know, they're fantastic. They're great to build. Well, um, well, they're easy, sort of. They're easy to assemble. I mean, beautifully moulded, don't get me wrong. You know, they're terrific. Um, well researched, fantastic instruction manuals. There's so many good things to like about Wingnut Wings kits. You know, they've evoked such a hysteria in the community, and especially now with Wingnut Wings not actually selling their kits anymore, the prices have skyrocketed. You know, to the point where it's it's cheaper to get a new kidney than it is to try and find yourself a Wingnut Wings kit online, where um, you'll have to actually sell those kidneys to get a kit. Now. Why am I being a bit divisive? Well, I've spent quite a bit of time. In fact, I spent years really on this one. And I'll explain why in a sec. I mean, there's a lot in the kit. Let's have a look. So, there's a lot here, right? It's beautiful. Lovely, well detailed, all the rest of it. And that has been my work for the last couple of years. It didn't really take me two years to do it, but I spent the time admiring it. And I haven't got any further. Why? Because this is what's going to happen. All right. That is going into there. And then, oh dear, I'm not going to see anything. So, all this work and all this trouble that I've gone to to produce this interior is a waste of time. And I know this happens with tanks, and I know this happens with um, quite a lot of you know other aircraft, you know, the World War II aircraft people build. Now, this is over-engineered. That's a fact. It doesn't need to be this full on, because you're never going to see it. This is far too many parts for what it is. It's lovely and it's great to do. But here's the thing. I've enjoyed that once and I've, I've admired this for so long that I didn't want to button it up. But I mean, to finish the kit, I need to button all of that up and then it's only a memory and I can only really refer to my photos. And, okay, I'll do, I'll do that once. Like with tanks, I did that once, the Panzer II. I built the whole interior and everything, then I buttoned it up and realised I'd never see it again. And that was okay. But then would I build another kit where I spend all this time doing things that are gone for eternity? And I'm just left with what is attractive and very interesting and nice looking aeroplane. I wouldn't. Yeah, that might shock you. But anyhow, I'll talk about that more in this video. But let's have a look at my build so far and let's button this up and get to the point where I'm kind of disappointed. Roll the music. <laughs> As you can see, there's lots of bits here which belong to an aeroplane. Well, actually, it's the Hansen Brandenburg W12, which I started building quite a number of years ago because basically I would bought the kit off the backer and his stipulation was that he would sell it to me for a very reasonable price of about 20 shekels. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a lot more now, uh, as long as I started building it. And so I did. I, I did a video on doing the wood grain and then I did a video on uh, basically doing up the whole interior and some of that. But since then, I have added and built up a lot of the other little bits and pieces. Well, when I say built up, there's very little assembly. I've only really got a few of the things together that I did in that last video. I've been working on the motor. I have pulled out all the parts I can find so that I can finally put the two fuse large halves together and we can button this up and then get on with the rest of it. In the previous videos, I'd gone through the kit and I had started, as I said, I did the wood effects and I built the interior up. So go back and watch those videos if you want to get up to speed. Now, the interior builds up very easily from the instructions. Wingnut Wings instructions are very comprehensive. So it was very easy for me to get to this stage. The hardest thing was just doing all the painting and wood effects. And, you know, there was a lot of mucking around. But basically the build is, it just falls together, okay? It is really not that hard. And they are very comprehensive. 
and very well illustrated instructions. So you really can't go wrong. Now I didn't do any of this rigging in here because basically none of that will ever be seen. So I was just wasn't going to waste my time with that. It just seemed rather pointless. As it is, 90% of what I've done here in the interior we'll never see once it's buttoned up. Which has sort of been one of the reasons I haven't got to this. Every time I thought about it, I thought, oh, just leave it a little bit longer because, you know, things like all the work I put into the dashboard here and, you know, just the, the, the seat belts, uh, which were photo etched and that I, I made look, you know, realistic in the cockpit. At least I think they look realistic. And, and all of this work, it, it really did take quite a bit of time. Anyhow, what I've done since those videos is I've started on the engine. So that was an easy assembly. Again, really, it just kind of fell together. And I basically dry fit it for ages. It sat there because it just kind of clicked together very nicely. But I needed to paint it and I needed to get it ready so we could button this thing up. And no more excuses. This video, I'm finally doing that. Now, the parts are nicely separated so that you can. You can paint the block black and you can paint the basically the um, well the cylinders black and this bottom part here maybe that's called the block I don't know but the bottom section here you can paint that aluminium which is what I did and then all the little individual parts which need leather and sort of some effects they were all done as well so everything was easy enough to detail paint because as you can see down here all these little parts just you know there's little um carburetors or something here and they're all sort of a goldeny brassy color and and away it went i mean i only did the simplest amount of detailing i put some dry brushing on the cylinders that's all i did and um, a little bit of a wash to get some effects there nothing too exciting just something to bring out the off. this is the only side you'll see if you leave the starboard side engine cowling off which they recommend in the instructions the port side all of this Never see it. Once it goes in, gone for good. Never seen again. So, um, yeah. And these tiny little, uh, I'll show a photo here maybe. Uh, these tiny little, um, this sort of ignition system, I suppose. I think they're the switching for the cylinders so that they're wires to the spark plugs, you know. I didn't wire the plugs up. Again, so little of this would be seen. And I've had that many delays with this kit anyway. I just thought... I'll paint it up, I'll build it out of the box, and we'll see how she looks. So really, I've got to this point now where I need to do that final assembly. So let's put together the um, basic cradle, and then I can assemble the motor, and then make those two, and then put the two halves on. And I'll try and explain to you some tips and tricks as we go, but basically, it's pretty easy. The, the only major thing is, don't put too much paint on this model. No, that's what most people fail. They, they put too many layers of paint on everything. And the torrances are so tight that if you do that, yeah, you'll have fit issues. So don't leave any paint on mating surfaces. And it really goes together quite well. Now, although I have dry fitted everything together and put it inside the fuselage and done a complete test fit, which I highly recommend, because as I say, you can find little areas where you've left a little bit of paint on and then the fuselage doesn't made up. So dry fitting everything at this stage is the solution to stopping problems later on. So it does click together really well. So you can, you can do that. And as from the photos, right, none of that was glued. It was just basically all clicked together. But... I have done all my tests, removed paint on joins where I, I noticed they were pushing it just that tiny bit apart. And I'm pretty confident now that the whole thing should make together and fit inside the fuselage. So at this stage, Wingnut Wings recommend that you put those side frames onto the seating arrangement before you go any further. And I think that makes sense after all my little dry fits and putting these together. I, I think that's a good idea to get that locked down because if they are loose, yeah, it really is quite hard to put everything inside the fuselage. So let's do that. And one of the things I did notice when I was doing my dry fits is there's this little piece here. And that sort of accumulates paint because there's a few little bumpy bits on it. And maybe I just didn't clean that up properly before I started working on things. But anyhow, that pushed the fuselage apart by a millimetre, which is enough that it wouldn't actually make together. So on both of these halves, that little section there, pay attention to that and sand that pretty flat. Because it won't be seen, it's all hidden, so there's no need for the detail. But what it does do is it does tend to push everything apart. So, let's see how we go. At assembling this so it's going to join so 
have a look. It's really just going to join at the bottom there and along that edge, so it's really just here. And there's no That's about it. Maybe a little bit along here. It's not much of a mating service, but honestly it'll hold itself in the cradle anyway. I mean inside the fuselage, so that's it. So making sure we get the right bits in the right places. Um, that's obviously important. So yes, you do have these little circles which are rather handy. And those were holes because they do match up perfectly to things that need to join and they need to join very precisely. So there we go. That's on there. Easy as that. Wherever she goes. And again this side it'll be the circle and that section there. You, you don't get any join on there. There's there's not a lot of mating surface, but it doesn't need to be. It, um, it actually holds together without any glue, as I know from my test fits. Using Rebel Contactor, because this will give me a little bit of wriggle room as I go through this process. Rebel Contactor will take a while to fully cure, and so it basically gives me the flexibility that um, as this thing goes together, if I'm slightly out or it hasn't quite set to the right angle, I'll have time to adjust it. That looks pretty good. So all that detail, take one last look, because we'll hardly see any of it, right? So all of all of those workings gone. So what they want me to do now is to mate this section on, but I'll um, I'll need to build the motor so that we can get all that happening. So let's um, put together the motor now, and then I can bring this part in and join it up with the rest of that uh, cradle. Now some of these parts I won't put on the motor just yet because they will be a lot easier once we actually put the um, fuselage halves in. So these two little braces here, which fit up into the radiator, they're, um, they're a bit tricky to put on the motor while you're building it, so I'll remove those for the moment. This little part is uh, only going to work when I've actually got the radiator, because it, it does click into the radiator, and then the back of it will click into the back of the motor. So it's best not to put this on now. They don't recommend you putting this on until much later on, so that's what we'll do. That leaves these parts here. And a couple of carburetors which have been hiding. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. As I said, it really is quite an easy fit. So, that is the top section of this block. Got to make sure you don't get any glue on the um, this little spindle here, which of course is going to drive the propeller. So we don't want to do that. Now, because I've already painted these, there's sort of no way I can use Tamiya Extra Thin and paint around the outside and let the glue sleep in to the joints. That's not going to work. So again, Rebel Contactor, I find, is so much easier at this point that I only have to put a schmattering on and it'll give me time for things to happen. Being less viscous, it's more like a gel, it'll just sit where I put it, which means there's less chance of things running off into places that you don't want them to go.
with our motor now assembled it's time to get the, um, the dashboard there control panel for this aircraft in and it's a it's a it's relatively easy there's a few fiddly things but one thing to check like you do all the way through this kit is remove paint from motor services so although they they look pretty in the videos Harry we need to get rid of this otherwise this thing is not going to fit together properly and as I've said this is the bane for most modelers of air of the um, LCD fixing but most modelers that build wing nut wings and then scream it doesn't fit is because the tolerances are that tight so mating services need to be clean and then things will fit inside things not so much when we get to the outside of this but right now that is vitally important so a bit of the uh, glue cement now a little thing to watch out for that I have to check in the instructions is a little it's a little pointy out thing there right which is basically a wire coming off this lever here whatever that lever does that's vitally important because it goes through a hole here in this lovely instrument panel I really like this instrument panel it um, it came up so well a little bit of wood effects the decals it wasn't that hard to detail paint and this is well before I had my Posca pens making things a lot easier like when I did the the motor I used Posca pens Posca paint pens to do the detailing which made it really easy but um, these are all hand brushed so um, right the hole Harry that's what we're here for the hole this hole here has got to go into or over the little rod so that is a vitally important first thing we've got to do here we go okay so now we can slide this in and it has very positive positive mating there and there so that is it it's clicked in and like everything in this kit it fits beautifully now i just did a dry fit of the motor and then putting the strut in and quite frankly you need that strut in first and that strut actually in my case pushed up the um, support here for the motor so I suggest that when you put that in that support you um, you also glue in your see it's lifted it so it's actually caused some problems so all of that I think really it'd be beneficial that it all goes in at once because it seems to all react with each other so that is my top tip here I would make sure that they're in now uh, we'll let that set and then I'll slide the motor in. Time to add uh, the motor to basically the fuselage interior. I wouldn't say cockpit because it's the front here. So we're just going to add the motor to this build, this cradle. Now it mounts at three points. So it's pretty easy. Pretty easy. And I'll just um, glue. Maybe that stabby thing, Harry, for you stabbies. I'm just going to put some... It's actually Tamiya thin because this thing sits in here so well. And Tamiya thin will dry a little bit faster. So, in she goes. Not real hard. There we go. I've put the little mount on here. This little, um, it's the carbine strut, I think it's called. Carbon strut. Carbon strut. Whatever you call it. Okay, that's on. So that completes the build of the, uh, the interior. And that's it. And now it's going to disappear forever. And this is kind of my bugbear with this whole thing. Is that there's sort of no way that I can have the model that it can pop open. And I can have a look at this again. So I'm taking my last looks at this. Because it's going to be gone. Okay, what we do need to do is the instructions now tell me there are a few things 
to do to the fuselage halves that um, I need to drill a few things and cut a few things out. Now, I'm doing version A, so I won't have to worry about cutting the hole for the windshield, so I can ignore that. But what I do need to do is there are these little radiator supports, and they also have little clips on them, which I believe uh, aid in positioning and holding in the um, cowlings for the motor, the um, little side panels. So I need to drill those holes. holes drilled out there's these mounting points here which are for these little things that go up into the radiator now I've just dry fit here the radiator so you can see here's this little strut for this side and this one goes down and it touches to a point on the engine block so as you can see it goes straight up and down but the cowling will fare out so what they've done is they've put a longer rod there and a shorter rod there. First I thought this is silly, I need to drill out these holes, but when you actually fit it on there, so it starts to make a bit more sense that you realise that, yeah, actually, that's going to end up straight up and down because your fuselage is going wider at the bottom. So right, we'll just glue that one in there and leave it to set um, so I don't knock it off, and then we can finally start putting these fuselage halves together. I fitted this little bracket here for the radiator. I've put that in later than the instructions say, only because I never really could figure out the correct angle for it. And the only way I could think to do that was now that the motors mounted in here was to dry fit the fuselage and dry fit the radiator on there. And then I could click it in and see exactly what the angle was. So really, it's one of those cases where Wingnut Wings, I think, has slightly got it wrong, which is unusual for them, in that um, to get the right angle on that, uh, you really need the parts dry fitted. Otherwise, how do you know? So um, they're off, and we are now ready to uh, finally do the assembly. So here we go. Goodbye, interior, and... On with the fuselage. Wingnut Wings recommend that you put in the starboard side fuselage first and then made it up to the port side. And that kind of makes sense with all the dry fitting. I mean, I've done a lot of dry fitting and I, if you're building these sort of kits, I suggest you do that. Don't just think, oh, I'll just click the next piece in. Dry fit, especially when you're coming to major assemblies like this. I had this apart and together a few times, made it to see if it would fit, but also to get a sort of head around a few little anomalies like there's this little I think it's an ammo ammo box here and it's um it's in the way so when you're going to put the side of the fuselage on it's going to bang into here so if we were just to make this up correctly that um little ammo box thing is is sort of in the way so it um does require a little bit of finagling here. You've got to sort of click it and push it through. There we go. So you just got to watch that one because it is basically banging into things. But your locating points are here on there with the motor mounts and centrally here, which is the hardest part to get nice and firm. And I think I'm going to need a little bit of putty when I glue that on. So with those clicked in place, I'm going to put a little bit of cement in around these um, joints here. And um, then we'll put the other side on.
Now I'm getting a good uh, good clean fit along here, which I knew. I knew that from my dry fitting, so that wasn't a problem. I'd already addressed everything I needed on the lower fuse large before I even you know started gluing because I'd sanded things smooth and made sure all those mating surfaces fit together. I knew that this part here, just um, behind the motor, that would fit together nicely. It would just need a little bit of squeezing, so I've got my rubber band in there. And, you know, basically, it's it's a good fit, and I've made sure. I mean, all my dry fitting has, has resulted in a lot of sanding off of the um, cradle and just checking that nothing was going to push the part. All except for here. This is the one spot. I can sort of get this happening, but it's not a happy camper at all. So... We'll see. So what I'm going to do here is use the contact professional. It's going to be a bit slower to uh, set, but it also tends to melt a lot more and create a much better bond. Tamiothene is good if you've got surfaces that are going to fit together perfectly, and Tamiothene will, through capillary action, will um, flow into those surfaces, as I've done here, and you don't need much clamping. But when you have got a stubborn bugger like that, you need something a bit more robust. So... Here we go, we'll put some of this in. And then we're going to sneak a very tight rubber band onto the end. Luckily there's no real pokey out things here. I've come from the, the back of the fuselage because if you try and work this on the front of the fuselage You've got a motor and a few other things in the way. So let's see how we go here. It's really needing quite a squeeze. We can try clamping it. I think it's the case of I may have sanded this a little bit too hard on that um, that front piece. So we're going to need some filler there. That's basically this little avoiding it. Much as I've got this thing clamped nice and hard, and I know that's as you know sanded as I could get everything. So um, yeah, I think I cleaned that up a little bit too much. Right, well, it looks like I'll be holding this for a while. It's the only way to get that. Um, those two surfaces together so um, we'll leave it at that that's my final button up of the wing nut wings uh, Hansa Brandenburg W12 and look they're terrific kits but it's heartbreaking that everything's gone like you do all that work and it disappears so that's a lot of the kit that's a lot of the parts I'm going to have big things now wings and what have you and you know, a tiny bit of rigging on this and the floats they'll be fun they'll be fun to do but that'll be a fairly easy part of the build compared to what I've done so far. And I feel, I don't know if I'm getting value for money here. But everything I've spent on this, and then to find that it's all just going to disappear and, and really never be seen, I'm wondering what all the hype is about. So please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my videos. Hit the like button if you like this video. Um, if you really want to do more for me, you can certainly click the Patreon button and for as little as a dollar a month, subscribe to my Patreon uh, page, which does help me finance doing these videos. But basically, that's all I've got to say. So it's, um, it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harriet Any.